Attention. Go. And we're away in the Prince Philip Challenge Trophy, the Tideway Scholar School on the right-hand side of your screen, Wimbledon High School on the left. We have another Thames Derby. These crews will know each other well. And they've been neck and neck as they go to the first 10, 20 strokes. We're right here with Wimbledon High School, the coxswain, Eleanor Griffin. She took a look over her shoulder. She's urging a crew on. I mean, it's so great watching the coxswains and they throw their whole body into it as they're coxing and they're yelling to the crew. I mean, it's so noisy in the boat that even though the coxswains have a microphone on and speakers in the boat, they still yell with all of their might because it is incredibly loud when you're in the boat and racing along. So you really do need them to be yelling. But the difference there, the Tideway Scholars School coxswain, that's Camille Cajol. She's very stable there in the boat, isn't she? She's really holding herself in that aerodynamic position, the body very still. I think you compare the two crews, they're very similar. The, the Tideway Scholars crew is slightly more relaxed, uh, but you can see the Wimbledon uh, High School crew absolutely going for it, flat out, you can see. Yeah. And it's neck and neck as that signal has gone past the quarter miles signal. And the Tideway Scholars School they look very composed. They've got very lovely, long, even stroke, nice back-ended rhythm there. Wimbledon High School, really aggressive, as you were saying, Jim, on the front of the stroke. But I think that that starts to become expensive down the track. Um, you do pay for that sort of dynamism at the front end of the stroke. And this is what we're starting to see now. The Tideway Sculler School, although it's not as aggressive, they're in probably a more sustainable rhythm, which is going to help them now to walk away from Wimbledon High School through the centre portion of this race. Yeah, well, it, will it cost them towards the end? But this, um, that last year when we're side by side, it's still only a few feet in it. A cracking view of the blades all going in there. And this is the Tideway Sculler School crew. As you said, really composed, and they're looking nice lengths there, stroke two. It's incredible looking at the composure on the faces here of these young women, especially compared to some of the other club crews. We see like real pain faces, real grimaces, whereas these these young athletes, they just look absolutely cool, calm, business-like as they're just executing their race plan down the track here. It's a really interesting... Uh, yeah, so uh, this, the blades here at Wimbledon High School, you can see they're just really punchy and aggressive as they put in their blade, and that really kind of uh, typifies how the, this crew is approaching this race, and there's a really interesting contrast between the two, two very, two very different rowing styles. We see the stroke for Wimbledon there, Jessica Brighton, so aggressive, she's really driving the body open, leading her crew down the track here. They're absolutely going to give it to the Tideway Scholar School all the way down the track. It won't be an easy win for them. Yeah, Tideway Scholar's taking maybe one or two less strokes a minute. They've got this, just, and that gives that a little bit more composure and they've got a little bit more length. And this shot's slightly deceptive because there's a bit of parallax, but I think Tideway Scholar's definitely got a lead as they come past us, maybe about the length or so. Interestingly, in the Wimbledon High School crew coming past us on screen there, the three-seat, Iris Fisher, she's only 15 years old, which makes her one of the youngest competitors at Henley Royal Regatta. She's in year 10, this is her third year rowing and the most successful year yet with the school's first ever national school's gold medal in the A final. So, fantastic young crew here from Wimbledon High School and I'm sure we'll be seeing a lot more of these athletes and particularly Iris over the coming years. I agree, and similar uh, experiences in the Tideway Scholar School crew, and time we look down, so uh, stroked by Edith Williams and Ansley Vickers, and they're, they're an amazing rhythm for this crew, and I think the rest of the crew is really feeding off it. Slightly longer stroke, taking maybe one or two less strokes a minute, and they're just propelling that boat a little bit quicker through the water, just, and they're doing a little bit less to kind of impede its travel, really. It's running better, isn't it? Yeah, fantastic rhythm here, still from the Tideway Scholar School. Just perhaps a little timing issue for Tideway Scholars that I'm sure they'll 
get onto during the week. You sort of see that little bit of a caterpillar effect with the blades going in. So that'll be something that I'm sure they'll address through the week as they progress, because as this race thing gets tighter and tighter as they head towards the weekend, they're really going to have to be on on to get those wins and get through. Yeah, just get that consistency we've been talking about all the way through the course, because it's a slightly strange part of the course. It's a quiet part of the course, because it's just before where the enclosures start. There's Upper Thames, Remnant Club, and there's about 100, 200 metres where there's just trees along the bank. It's quite quiet, and it's also the wind's coming across. The wind's a slight cross head today, and it's also the water's a bit bobbly around there, and some crew, crews kind of lose themselves a little bit at that point. Yeah, the Wimbledon crew, they're absolutely giving it everything they can. I saw a little shout there from Esme Raymond in the two-seat, urging the crew on as they're coming down to the last third of this race. Wimbledon High School taking 36, 37 strokes a minute, so they're absolutely doing their best to come back on level terms with Tyway Scullers. You can hear the contrast of the uh, copses as they just come past through there. So the cops at Tyway Scullers Schools, that's uh, Camille calmly talking to her crew. I think she knows the situation they're in. She's trying to keep her crew long and relaxed, despite ratings 34, 35 strokes a minute. You know, they want to sit there and enjoy that lead and maintain it. But you've got to give it to Wimbledon High School. They've fought all the way down this course, haven't they? To really punchy, aggressive strokes, never giving up, always taking two or three strokes a minute more than Tyree Ty Scholar School. Yeah, fantastic effort here. We had a great shot there across the bow of the boat. I love that shot looking into the back of the boat. We're seeing the same shot here of the Tideway Sculler School. Just really composed. Bodies all in unison. It's really synchronised, isn't it? You look at the bow and it just cuts through the water and almost cleaving a perfect V-shape as the, the bow comes through. Yeah, they're really sympathetic to the boat. You can see uh, that the boat isn't moving around, rolling around, running nice and, and true. And as you said, that little V bow wave coming off the end of the boat there, indicating that there's not much steering going on from the coxswain or corrective action from the coxswain, which inevitably ensures that the boat goes faster as well. Now they're coming past the progress boards so 100 metres or so to go to the finish. Now they can enjoy this, they can look up, they know they're two lengths up or so now, and they can enjoy this, the last few strokes coming down to the finish. As they come down towards the line now, the coxswain just veering into the centre of the course. That's Tideway Scullers School and Wimbledon High School coming down to the line. Confirmation of that result in the Prince Philip Challenge Trophy, the Tideway Scullers School defeating Wimbledon High School.